In this video, I want to explain how to use Word's formatting tools to help you write a better academic paper. I'm using Word version 16 on a Mac, but all of the functions I'm going to show you have long been available in Word, and if you're using an older version, you can find videos online explaining the same functions as I'm going to show. The same goes for Google Docs. To start, I'm going to open up a student paper that looks like most of the papers I received. It was formatted by using lots of hard returns. You can see them all lined up here and by applying different formats. Here you can see bold and italics, italics here. We have bold and italics again. We have bold and italics uh, and some different kinds of letters and numbers. Basically, it looks like the student opened up Word, started typing, and eventually formatted things to make them look nice by selecting text and applying various format changes and adding line breaks randomly throughout the document. Lesson number one is please don't do that. Never apply a style manually when you can apply it as a formatted style, and never add space by hitting the return bar if you can possibly help it. Instead, format with styles. Formatting with styles has a dual purpose. First, it's going to allow you to make consistent changes throughout your document, and second, it's going to create organizational structure that you can use to really see and better analyze your own writing. Let me show you how. First, notice that I have the home ribbon showing. That's this here. If you can't see that, click on home to toggle it, and then you'll be able to see it. What you have here is your basic copy paste, formatting of fonts, paragraph formatting, and then this thing. This is your quick styles. Maybe you sometimes use it without even really thinking about it. Quick styles pane has default styles chosen by Word, and we're going to work with these and maybe modify them. So I want to see them in a way that's more accessible. So I'm going to click on the styles pane so I can see them. Same styles here as we're here. And what we're seeing is what Word has recommended. You can see that here. You can choose styles in use in current document or all styles. Recommended is fine for now. Next, I'm going to click on a set of words I want to format and then click on different styles to see what happens. Notice, as I choose different styles, the text is just going to simply change to the new style. It's just a visual aesthetic change right now. But these two lines look like they're supposed to be a heading and a subheading. I'm going to pick heading one for this one and I'm going to pick heading 2 for this one. Now aesthetically this is not all that pleasing and we're free to format these headings however we want, but before we do that let's have a look at what we've done. Yes, we've changed the aesthetic of the text in question, but we've also done something else. We programmed Word to recognize that these two lines are not just text like the rest of the document. Instead, they're headings in our document. Now I want to show you how Word uses this knowledge to build a document outline which can then also be used to automatically generate numbered tables namely a table of contents, with just a couple of clicks. We'll start with the document outline. For this, I'm going to open up the sidebar. Click on View, Sidebar, and Navigation. You can immediately see something. The two lines I formatted as headings are here, but I don't see them in the document because the document moved around when I switched to Sidebar View. But I can just click on that and go find them. There they are, the two lines we formatted. One is the heading one, and the other is heading 2. Missing, of course, are the headings that the student manually formatted throughout the rest of the document. If I go through and just click on those, just guessing what they are right now, you're going to see them populated over here in the sidebar. You can go through and see what else is here, but we're just picking a few to get us started. All right, now we see that we seem to have three headings so far and a few subheadings. Maybe there are more. There seem to be a bunch of stuff here. I can't tell if that's a heading one or a heading two. This is why we do this, because we're trying to figure out what's the structure of this document. What was the student thinking when they made it this way? Is this a two? Maybe it's a three. Is it supposed to be under reform efforts or is it supposed to be under initial reaction? I don't really know when I'm reading the document and that's why I want the student to format it. This outline of the document in the sidebar is not just an outline, it's a navigation tool. When I'm reading the student's paper, I'm looking in the text and reading it, but I'm also looking, where am I in the document? What's the structure here? What's the story that's being told? I can also use it to navigate. If this, I'm reading this and it seems like I've read it before, I can just pop back up and see, well, did I see that up here? Maybe this is supposed to belong down here. Maybe there needs to be a cut and paste going on here to get this organized properly. If there's rambling going on or wandering and the student is going on at length and there doesn't seem to be much order, the outline function is going to reveal it all. It shows you where you have too many sections or too few, where you have unhelpful headings versus too long headings versus just right heading. My advice to students is to study the document outline and think about it when you're arranging your paper. 
just undertaking the small step of formatting will immediately show you how your argument is put together. And now you can see if it makes sense. Are there repeating headers? Are there sections that you seem to have written twice? Seeing your structure can help you organize your ideas. You can go a step further in a document that's got really out of control. Just add a few words at the beginning of each paragraph to signal what it's about. Then you can come back later and reorganize them. If you do nothing else with your document, please use word styles to format. But let me show you one other thing, and that's outline numbering. This is going to take your organizational structure and turbocharge it. Just click on the downward arrow here on heading one and click on modify style. You're going to get this dialog box. Now we're going to click here on format and we're going to choose numbering and we're going to choose outline numbered. This is my preferred style right here. It's a Roman numeral one followed by a capital A followed by a one. But you can pick any of these styles. As long as you're consistent, it doesn't really matter which one you choose. Click OK twice to get out of that dialog. Now you can see something has happened here. It's quite remarkable. Word has not only changed the numbering of our heading ones, but Word recognizes that heading two is a sub of heading one, and it has accordingly changed the numbering all the way down through heading four. And if you went and looked at all styles, you would see it's all the way down to heading nine. But for us, probably four is plenty. Usually I don't get much past three. But here, now you can really see what's happening here. Are these 1, 2, and 3 of A, or are these supposed to be B, C, and D? Just quickly click to change it. Maybe this is a new heading 1. As you go through, you're going to start to see how this argument is put together. Finally, now that things are formatted, you can also build a rational table of contents with just a couple of clicks. In this paper, as in many papers, I think the student probably just copy pasted each of the headlines and stuck them in here. But we're going to just get rid of all that. And we're going to start over. We're going to do insert, index and tables, and we're going to choose table of contents. And here are the pre-formatted headings. Three is good enough. And it's saying, well, what do you want? You want something fancy? Do you want it to look lovely? I don't really care. From the template is fine. Click OK. There's your table of contents. It's got the page numbers. This table of contents is hyperlinked. It's going to take you to that spot in the document. So now you can move around your document with a lot more flexibility. You don't always have to go back up to the top to see the table of contents. You can just read it here and say, okay, what are we talking about here? Oh yeah, we're in section four. We're talking about reform efforts and we already talked about these other things above. There are many more things you can do once you understand that style formatting is programming and programming introduces consistency and organization to your papers. But if you do nothing else, at least hand in papers that you've organized in such a way that your reader, like me, can understand how you've put your document together and whether your argument or explanation flows properly and makes sense. That's it for today. I hope this video has been helpful.